I had a vision and the winds of change are blowing. What does that mean? That can only mean one thing. In the Bible, there were seasons, just like we have seasons in the natural, there were seasons many times where there was change for the people of God. In Israel, there was change for the Jews who start Christianity and there would be a, a huge momentum of things that would happen out of that change. And I believe we're in a season again, when I saw this vision, I saw the vision of winds carrying keys and they were landing on people just like you and I. And these keys were all about key things that were gonna change in your life, your perspective, your identity. And many of you have been going through some of the greatest internal changes so you can see great external changes that you could not have partnered to or had the fruit of if you hadn't have done the work inside. So to my friends out there who've done the inner healing, who've done the, the counseling, who've done the work inside the discipleship, it's gonna pay off so big in this next season. And if you haven't done it yet, do it. Just do it. God's gonna give you opportunity to really catch up in those areas. But I believe we're about to hit a time like the parable of the 10 virgins where five had the oil, which represented they had a connection to their relationship with God, to themselves. They understood their purpose. They had oil in their lamps, which represented their intimacy and their purpose to God. And then there was five who had just been living life. There's five who might've been stuck, might've been frustrated, didn't feel like they had to do the work, and they just stayed behind. Left behind. They wanted the oil for the ones who had it, but they couldn't get it because they only had enough for themselves. That speaks a personal responsibility that you and I have to really build our own place of connection with God. No one can live vicariously through your relationship with God. They have to have their own relationship. And so you can't give it away. And that's really painful for parents and grandparents. It's painful for pastors sometimes when they're like, why are my people making the wrong choices? Why is this person deconstructing their faith. Why is my grandchildren not walking with God? We raised them right. Well, they can't live through your faith. Your faith will not justify them before the throne. But I'm telling you, God is going to do some things through your life, whereas he's giving you key changes and he is giving you keys for change. You're also going to help them as you come into the fruit of what you're called to. It's going to bring a lot of people to attention. They're going to say, what is going on with you? How are you getting this fruit? How are you have access to this? How have you become this? How, 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 how have you recreated yourself again? I kept hearing that, that many people are going to recreate themselves yet again. Some of you are going to go through a career change. Some of you are going to go through a place where it's like how you operated in your relationships is going to so change. Maybe God's cutting out toxic people. Maybe he's training you in emotional intelligence, whatever it is, it's going to so change that people will not recognize you in such a great way that they're gonna ask you big questions. And these big questions are gonna to lead to big relationship content between you and the world around you when it comes to expressing your faith. What happens you know, in those seasons where people are saying, what must I do to get saved? What, what really, that's, that sounds like such, a, such a, you know, a spiritual thing that could never happen to little old me for someone to wanna ask me how to get saved because like I don't reveal who God is enough. I'm not in just with a grocery store teller and with the airline pilot and with all the people I'm interacting with. Can my faith really bring someone to the point where they're like, what must I do to get saved? Well, when you're emulating God's love and you're actually walking in your calling and you're walking in the destiny that God's given you and people see it, especially if you're in the business community and politics and entertainment, or you're a mom, or you're a parent, you're a father, you're a husband and a wife, and you're walking it out with God, people see it and they go, you have something that's so authentic, it has to be your faith. How can I have faith like that? And that's ultimately what we're gonna to start to experience in mass, where people are gonna say, there's not a lot of answers in the Democrat party and the Republican party. There's not a lot of answers in the school system I'm going to. There's not a lot of answers for me, even at some of the churches people are going to, but when I look at your life, I see what it's like to walk with God. And I want to walk with God that way. We're going to start to have so many people ask questions. So you're doing the work. You're going to wake up and work hard at it. You're doing the work to get your heart right. You're doing the work to get connected to yourself and to God and to others. You're doing the work to, to you know, create the resources, to create the resource base, the finances you need. You're doing the work to be obedient to God and to follow him into adventurous passions that you wouldn't have said yes to if it was just about you. You're doing the work to learn how to love people and not to manifest the, the opposite of the kingdom culture, but to actually say, God, I choose you. And when you do that work, it provides an on-ramp for people to see what love looks like. And when they see what love looks like, they see Jesus. Sometimes it's without words, sometimes it's with words. And I believe that these winds of change that are coming are actually setting us up so that people will see into our lives. They're gonna look into our lives and they're gonna say, surely God is real. I am serious. 
and don't call me Shirley. Your life is gonna set people up. And sometimes it's not through the perfection of like, I everything's together, I'm awesome. You know, everything I'm doing is like perfect, whatever. A lot of times it's through the vulnerability of the failure you just had, the hardship you just went through and how you overcame through Jesus, through the blood of the lamb, through your relationship with God and people see, oh my gosh, you were gonna foreclose, but you didn't. Or you foreclosed and you did, but you still were able to buy the house. What happened? What ha like, how did you do that? I'm, I'm in the same financial precarious place. Like one of your family members might be watching you. Like my parents, they, you know, they have this, I think they're close to 60 years marriage now. And the whole family unit on both sides have watched them because they're the only ones that have had this longevity and marriage. Most of my family members on both sides have gone through one or more divorces. And my parents, when they got saved, they said, we give our marriage to you, God. And they've walked out. My mom adores my dad and my dad adores my mom and they're best friends. And so my family has looked in and towards the end of their lives, especially the older ones, they would lean into my parents, especially when they were sick or going through something, lean into my parents and say, they'd ask my mom, what did you do to get a man like Larry? And they'd ask my dad, how, do you, how, does, how did you keep the adoration of your wife? Like, how did you, like your marriage and your family, like it's, it's real, like God has to be real because you guys have been faithful to follow God all these years and your family is different than our family or your family, you guys have love. Your family is still connected. Your family loves each other. And I'm telling you, it works. Well, our family, we've had a lot of family members get saved because we just love Jesus and we kept loving him and we kept loving him and kept turning back and kept staying, you know, staying faithful. And I think a lot of people, just that, that story of faithfulness, the story of people watching you do what you're called to do, the story of you're the one family member who did whatever it is, maybe who moved to a new city because God showed you to, but you thrived there, moved in your career you couldn't have done if it was just based on your own desire, you know, wrote a book or did something with your talents and your skills that no one else in the family did. And your family is all watching, your friends are all watching and people are looking at you going, how did you have the courage to do that? And they know they're no different than you. So they know there has to be a God equation and the winds of change are coming and it's gonna bring a move of God to highlight you to your friends and family, to your neighborhood, to your community. And they're gonna ask big questions, so be ready, not just have a pat answer. More generic. Accessing. Don't just give them the theological pat answer, give them a Jesus answer, which includes the scripture, but also includes the very real story of maybe breakdowns and breakthroughs, of real things that have happened and how you're still in process with God. You're not like you haven't arrived anywhere, but you're still in process, you're still learning, you're still growing. And I think about a study they did in 2018 and 19, I mean, no, it was 2017 and 18, where there's a leadership group that did a study on some of the top leaders in the world of different genres, like in science and education, and a lot of the, the head jobs, you know, and uh, the mental jobs, and they sit in mathematicians and, and astronauts and astrophysics and these kinds of things. You're not smarter than us. And they asked people, and they did all these surveys about how, how much people are still growing once they're an expert in their field, how much their human capacity is still growing. And once people took on the label of expert, doesn't mean that they, there's certain people who are called experts, but they haven't taken on the label. But once they took on the label, they are an expert, their human capacity started to decline in its learning and its growth. Meaning they start to regress instead of progress. They start to grow less because they took on something that made them stop coming like a childlike faith to say, the world is awesome and I don't know enough. I don't know everything yet. I'm still gonna learn. Well, Christians, are terrible at kind of plateauing. We, we get to a place where we're like, oh, I know, I know, I know. People tell us their story and we're like, I've been there, I've done that, I've, well, I did that five years ago. Versus, you know what? I'm still growing and I'm still learning. And thank you for sharing your story because it reminds me of who God is to me. And we have to get to the place of that, of that listening in with ears of faith, that faith comes by hearing that everyone God's put in my life, whether they're a new believer, a non-believer, a believer who's our pastor or our friend or somebody who's leading us, that we listen with ears of faith because God's gonna expand you. And a lot of the ways he's gonna expand you is he's gonna put an example in front of you of what's possible. And it's your turn to look at that example and say, me too, God, you're gonna do something in my life. And if this is making sense to you, and this is a prophetic word for you, make sure to hashtag my turn, hashtag that it's my turn to grow, it's my turn to have those winds of change, it's my turn, I'm seeing key things in my life change, and I pray over you that God would show you how to partner with change so that it's not hard, how to partner with his will so he doesn't have to like put you in a place where you're saying, yes, God, I'll do anything, but you're not really living it out, so it becomes very complicated, because then there's the war. The enemy comes in, relationships get in conflict. But when you say yes and you mean it in your heart, then God's grace comes and change isn't hard 
like it's hard for everybody else because God leads you through the change. Doesn't mean there's not difficult cir- circumstances at some time uh, or at some point, but God leads you. And I just pray over you that you would see those areas of change, partner your faith to them, let God change you. Let God who's forming you into a new creation, keep forming you, you're not done yet. You're not even halfway there. Let God keep forming you until you see so much of God that people are asking you, I need to know Jesus the way you know Jesus. I need to have what you have. And that's gonna happen over and over in your life because of how you're saying yes to God right now. I bless you and I'll see you next time. Make sure to listen each and every Sunday for our special message, which says supplement to your faith. And you can click on subscribe on our YouTube channel so you get it every Sunday just like this. I'll see you next time. Hey, I'm Charity Kayembe. I'm super excited to be back on Spiritual Growth Academy for our brand new course that we're offering in February. It's on living empowered by spiritual gifts, how to release his gifts in every area of your life. So it's a four week class. On the first week, we're gonna talk about every gift of the spirit in everyday life. What does a word of wisdom look like on the job, in the gym, at home? We wanna get a vision for spiritual gifts outside the four walls of the church. The second week, we're gonna talk about supernatural vision, how that is actually your sacred superpower. It is a dimension of your inheritance as a child of God, anointed by Holy Spirit. Then in the third week, we're gonna answer the question, well, do I only get one gift or can I have them all? We're gonna look at the lives of Jesus and Paul and see, well, did they only flow in one or two spiritual gifts or were they flowing in six or seven or eight or nine? Because whatever Jesus and Paul were doing, we can do that too. And then the last week we get very practical. We talk about flow and steps that we can take to release his river within. It's gonna be a lot of fun and I hope to see you in February.